Welcome back to the kitchen. This week we're learning how to make a beautiful tomato soup called a crème de tomate, okay, the tomato cream with a recipe from Roger Verger, which is one of my favorite chefs from the south of France. You can make that recipe with fresh tomatoes if they are in season, and if not, don't worry, even if it's winter, you can use a canned tomato to make the exact same recipe. So you've got the choice. Let's go. <music> Now what I like about Roger Verger is that he always uses very few ingredients, a very simple one. As you can see, all we're going to need are tomatoes or, if you want, one kind of chopped tomatoes that works as well. A white onion, garlic, thyme, an egg, about a cup or 250 milliliters of chicken stock, butter, sugar, some cream, and some salt and pepper. That's all. For the cookware, there's one important piece, uh, an instrument here, which is the vegetable meal we'll need. And instead, if you want, you can use a stick blender. Now let me chop and prepare everything and show you how the mise en place looks like. Now for the mise en place, all the ingredients will be listed on the video description, but this is all about measuring most of it. Huh? The stock, the butter, uh, the sugar, have the eggs ready. This is for the ends. You're gonna peel your little piece of garlic. This is from my garden, finally. You know, as a French, I'm growing my own garlic. And you're gonna thinly slice the white onion, measure the cream and the tomatoes. This is with the onion, the only work you're gonna have to do, okay? So tomatoes, with the skin, chop them in little pieces, and all what you need to do is to remove that, uh, the inside here, okay? So you go with your knife around, a sharp knife, and you remove that hard bit. Discard it, boom, and once you're done, you know, you're gonna cut your tomato in half, and then you're gonna cut into little pieces. And that's all what I've done, okay? Easy. And now let's start the recipe. The first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna use, you can use a small saucepan. I'm using this uh, saute pan because it's one of my favorites, uh, but medium heat. And all what we're gonna do is to cook the onions. This is actually very, very important. And anytime when I'm looking at the recipe, I know that the chef knows what he's doing by the amount of minutes spent cooking the onions. And 15 minutes is actually the time it takes to cook an onion. And guess what, Roger Verges is you put the butter in here, we've got one or two tablespoons of water with all of the onions that we're gonna have to cook very slowly. This is called alletuve, cooking in butter and water in that mixture for a good 10 to 15 minutes until the onions are totally cooked. Because an onion that is not cooked, being in any preparation, being a soup or anything else, there is nothing worse. It's gonna be kind of crunchy, it's not gonna release all the flavor. So trust me, if there's one thing you need to get right, is right here. So here we are, 15 minutes have passed. This is the result, the most important. You don't want any coloring on your onion. You don't want any burn marks, you don't want any brown. You see it's still very white and it's very soft and cooked. Now it is now, well, you can add, you know, the thyme and the garlic first if you want. Then we're gonna add all of the tomatoes with the sugar. There's no salt and pepper going in here. We're gonna just add this at the end. I'm gonna raise my heat to medium, okay? And very slowly, as the heat rises, I'm gonna turn the tomatoes and we're gonna cook these uncovered, mixing them around for a good 10 minutes. So 10 minutes have passed, and as you can see, the color is not really a deep red. And this is typical, even though you're in summer, it's actually very hard to get super ripe tomatoes that are gonna yield that kind of color. This is why sometimes using canned tomatoes when it's not the season is even better because you're not gonna have too much acidity and you're really gonna have this color. But it doesn't matter for me, after 10 minutes, I'm gonna take all of the stock, pour it in, and leave everything to boil for two or three minutes. Make sure you mix everything well. After three minutes, we're gonna turn the heat off, and we're gonna do the difficult task of trying to fish out the uh, little pieces of thyme, or branches of thyme that are in there, and discard them. Once you've done and you fish out all the thyme, it is now time to either mix uh, the tomatoes here, the tomato soup with a stick blender, or like me, to pass it through the vegetable meal. So this is what I'm gonna do now. For the vegetable meal, I'm using a bowl. I've got a thing here, be very careful because it's hot. And all at once, you're gonna pour everything inside first, okay? And then you're gonna start the turning, okay? Being very careful because it's super hot. You don't want to burn yourself, huh? Now I'm all done. So this is the juice that I've got. And you may wonder what is the advantage of using a vegetable wing compared to a stick blender. The stick blender pulverizes things. All what you see here will be pulverized. The, the food meal, or vegetable meal, the good thing is that it really acts as a sieve. There's a sieve at the bottom and it presses down all the vegetables and it keeps all of the skins, uh, the seeds and everything stays behind. And it's not kind of broken apart 
and spread into the soup. So if you use a stick blender, you mix first and then you have to pass the whole lot through a sieve to get that effect here. As soon as you're done with the tomato soup, you've passed it, or you've mixed it and blended it, you're gonna put everything back in the pan. I've cleaned my pan here. And I'm gonna put this on a simmer. I'm gonna clean my bowl. And now we're gonna transform that base tomato soup into the cream of tomato, uh, using the cream and the egg yolk. So to make the cream, it is very simple. We're gonna use a technique that is used usually to thicken velouté, one egg yolk, all of the cream that is cold. And we're gonna use a little whisk and just mix everything together. As soon as you're done with this, uh, you're gonna take the tomato soup that sits on the stove, and uh, that should be a uh, simmering, uh, almost boiling, and we're just gonna pour it over the cream at once, mixing well, okay? And just spend a good minute just blending everything. Now for the sake of the footage, I've cleaned the pan again, and all what you're gonna do, you're gonna pour back all that mixture with the soup, with the cream and the egg back into the pan, and we're gonna bring this to a light simmer. You don't want this to boil, otherwise your egg yolk is gonna cook and transform into an omelette. So it's gonna be a thin line of really keep on stirring like this until it starts fuming and the soup starts to thicken slightly. It's a very delicate project here. So for the last bit, seasoning. And if like me, for instance, like I said, the tomatoes were lacking a bit of color, you know what I'm gonna do? My little trick, there's always a way to adjust. I'm gonna add one or two tablespoons of these fresh chopped tomatoes. And it's gonna add some chunkiness into there, just a little nuggets of pleasure. And you see the color? is gonna darken ever so slightly. Perfect, so salt and pepper, there's none, so I don't expect this to be a bit salty at all. Mm. Yeah. Garden fresh, huh? uh, but definitely a good grind of salt first. And pepper, I'm gonna be easy. You can use white pepper, because otherwise you're gonna see the black, the black spot, but we should be fine. I'm gonna stir and try again. Okay, so I've adjusted with a little bit more salt and this is a thin line because you've got the sweetness of the tomato, just that garden fresh flavor that you don't want to lose. So be careful with the salt because if you add too much, you're gonna go into the salty territory and you're gonna really lose all the effect. And I think tomatoes are very, very uh, you know, sensitive to this. So be careful with the seasoning. But that's it, from here, you're ready to serve and we're gonna turn the heat off. We can, if we want, pass this again through a fine mesh sieve over a plate or another dish before serving or serving as is, but for us, it's gonna taste. So here we are, crème de tomate from Roger Verger, the cream of tomato, and the color, of course, is gonna depend on the quality of the tomato you use or canned tomato, but look, I've added some little chunkiness in there. Let me have a little, a little try. Mm. Oh, so the first thing that jumps at you is garden fresh flavors. The tomatoes have not been destroyed. And this is something I love when a recipe does that. It does taste like a fresh, a freshly picked tomato from the garden with a little bit of seasoning around it. But it is really, really well balanced. Now, I can see that for some people, there's gonna be a bit of a, a clean state on which you can build upon. So I've added some basil. You could infuse this with basil leaf and you can add more color of tomato paste. And what about this? dipping the crouton into the soup. But it's these kinds of soup, you know, you have one spoon and I'm going back for seconds because it just calls you for more with that, that healthy factor into it. Mm. And now we are reaching the end of the video. It was great to try another recipe from Roger Virgin. If you're looking for something different, a tomato soup with a different one, give this a shot. If you have any questions, use the comment section as always. If you want to support us, you've got Patreon, you can follow us on Facebook. And if you make the dish, remember Instagram, hashtag MyFrenchDish. We post all your pictures. And of course, if you want to learn more about French cooking, the culinary school that you will find now on our brand new website. We will attach this recipe that's gonna be downloadable, easy to print with all the bells and whistles you can expect very soon. I see you all next week. Take care all, bye-bye.